In my never-ending quest to find the perfect small camera, I've been using the Ricoh GR3X for the last month now, and here are my thoughts and whether it's worth it considering we have a lot of other options available. First of all, why the GR3X? Well, the X and the standard 3 are just exactly the same camera with a slightly different focal length. This one, the X, is around a 40mm in full frame terms and the original 3 is just a little bit wider. So I thought while I'm using this for street photography and just documenting day-to-day -day life, the 40mm was more up my street. It is an APS-C size sensor and that's all I've wrote in that bullet point. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> So let's get straight to why I think people are drawn to the Ricoh cameras and that is of course the form factor and the build quality. Now I have to say the build quality is a bit lush. It is very very premium and it feels really nice in the hand. I also think the button layouts are really clever as well and I think it's a very intuitive and ergonomic camera. Everything is where you need it to be to get going. I don't think this camera is perfect though. There are a few niggles in the hardware that I will talk about in a little bit. But in terms of the software, I think this is a very intuitive menu system and even being new to the system, I felt like I could set it up straight away, turn it on and just get out taking photographs. It's very, very intuitive and very user friendly. There's nothing really buried in the menus. There's nothing really stopping you from getting the results straight away. The grip is honestly pretty much the best grip I've found on a pocketable camera in my experience. I like that it's still thin and slim line so you can still put it in your pocket but it is just indented enough that you can get a good grip on it and I just think it feels really nice in the hands. The ergonomics are great. One thing that I thought was initially wonderful and then after a few days hated was the exposure compensation dial. It's right near your thumb, which is great. So you can be holding it single-handed and because it's a fixed focal length, you won't need to ever use two hands with this camera, which is great. So you can use it single-handed and then you've got your thumb here on the dial, ready to rock. If you're the kind of person that keeps the camera in hand for like a full hour when you're walking and you know, you just keep it on and ready to go, it's a great idea. But if you're like me and you put the camera away and back out in a pocket, in a bag, I found that I hit this blooming thing so many times. Sometimes my images were really overexposed and it's hard to tell on the screen sometimes. So initially I thought it was great and then I learned to hate it. So I think you can turn it off in the menus. <laughs> Or just be more careful with it. One killer feature with the Ricoh is it has built-in ND filters. And when you pair that with the IBIS, which is very, very strong, you can get some really good daytime long exposures. I wish the video capabilities were better. Unfortunately, it's a bit pants for video because having ND filters built into a video-centric camera would be like, so good. I don't know why more people don't try and do this. It'd be so good. The IBIS comes in handy, especially at night, because while this is an APS-C censored camera and should on paper probably be quite a bit better than my Micro Four Thirds cameras that I'm used to, I didn't think that this really set me alight in terms of low light capability. It is a 2.8 lens, so it's not necessarily the lens fault. The sensor is just a little bit noisier than I was expecting. The way that you can get around this is using your IBIS and lowering your shutter speed slightly. It's great if obviously your, your subject isn't moving. If your subject's moving, you're just gonna have to deal with a bit of grain. It's not exactly unpleasing, but it is more grainy than I was expecting. The color profiles inside the Rico are brilliant. My personal favorites are film negative and film positive, and they're quite stylized picture profiles. And if you shoot in RAW and JPEG like me, you can play around with the photo profile settings, and then you still got your RAW file to sort of edit to taste if you don't like how the original came out. For a documenting your life kind of camera, something that's going to be with you in all situations, leaving it on film negative or film positive and shooting raw for a backup gives you the best of both worlds. Here are some examples with how the camera would do it versus how I edited the raw file afterwards. As you can see, they're pretty nice out of camera, to be honest. And there's some very, very nice monochrome ones as well. And the good thing about it is once you have the raw files in Lightroom, you can change the photo profile after the fact. Now there is a macro mode on this little guy and it does the job, but it just seems to crop in on the sensor to me because the actual focal range just bumps in a little bit. Yes, it does have macro capabilities, but I'm not convinced it's actually from the lens in any way. It's just 
punching into the sensor. If anyone knows for sure, do let me know in the comments because I think that's quite interesting. But yeah, the macro features are not going to set your light, but it does add an extra level of versatility if you are using a single focus lens. Speaking of the lens, it's very slim profile, very incognito, and I find this lens to be lovely. Sharp all the way to the edges, really great for detail. It's a fixed lens, so you would hope that it's blooming good, and I'm very happy to say, that it's blooming good. This all sounds very positive, doesn't it? But I think there are two things in particular that I do not like about the Cheeky Rico. And one of them, shock horror, is the autofocus. Now I know that's pot, kettle black, and all that being a micro for third channel. You'd think I'd be quite used to having mm, average autofocus capabilities, but I found the, the Rico to be particularly bad. I would say it's about as good as a low-end Micro Four Thirds camera, or sometimes even worse. There were a few instances where the shutter speed was right, the focus dot was where it needed to be, and it still gave me misses. And it's unfortunate. You know, things happen quite quickly when you're out and about. You can't really stage very much. This is very much a documentary photography kind of camera, in my opinion. So having the, the focus be a little bit pants is a little bit sad. But it's certainly usable, and I got a lot of good images out of it. <laughs> but one time in particular, I was up Mam Tor in the Peak District, and it was the windiest day in the world and I was trying to take a picture of the valley on the way down there's like this iconic scene where where the road sort of meanders through the mountain well it's not really a mountain it's just a big hill and the camera nothing was moving it was a landscape photo the camera was just pulsing could not get that photograph to save my life it took me so many attempts and I think the wind the power of the wind on the actual front element was like making the focus pulse. So yeah, the focus for me was particularly a negative point in an otherwise wonderful camera. But as you can see, it is usable. You just have to bear that in mind. I'm on like the creakiest floorboard. Anyway, the second thing I like less about this camera, and I assume it's down to the mechanism around the retractable lens, is it is not weather sealed which is a shame because you would like this to be out in the rain with you you'd like this to be out and about anywhere with you now i would be okay taking this out in some a drizzle i have done that once or twice but anything dusty anything icy anything that's very very rainy this is not the camera for you unfortunately as i've hinted at the video features are a little bit poo <laughs> It's very much a photography camera and that's absolutely fine. I think if you can pick a team and just be good at one thing or the other, you'll get a very good product. Unless I'm being very, very dumb, which is always a possibility, there isn't even a recording button built in unless you assign it to a function button or change to the video mode in the menu. And I think then it only does 30p and it's a bit pants and doesn't have a good microphone and the IBIS is good and it's got ND filters so it was almost a perfect idea. But yeah, this is very solidly a photography camera and quite right. Doesn't need video. The price. Ah, the price. This is a pricey little sausage of a camera. You have to really, really love the idea of having a 40mm lens with you at all times and having the pocketable camera with you for it to be worth the price, in my opinion. It does one thing very, 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 very well, but it's very, very pricey. I have done other videos about cheaper alternatives, which I can link in the description below, or have a mooch around my channel and subscribe there while you're at it. And the price is a little bit of a sticking point, however, here is where Cheapskate Bargain Emily comes into play. The majority of the features in the GR3X that may have caught your eye, like the focal length, the 2.8 aperture, the build quality and the size, are pretty much across the board in the whole Ricoh line. So you don't have to get the Mark III. Perhaps you should look online for a Mark II or a Mark I. And I have a great place for you to do that. This episode is sponsored by MPB, and if you don't know, they are the world's largest online platform for buying, selling, and trading your photography goodies. Now, I am so happy that they sponsor this channel because I am an MPB convert. I must get half a dozen emails every blooming week where it's like, this is back in stock, this is how much it costs, or this lens is back in stock, this drone is back in stock, and the email alerts are really, really good. Because I think some of the things I review on this channel, like the Rico, <laughs> can be a little bit pricey. And sometimes it might be worth waiting a couple of weeks or a couple of months to find a used bargain. So definitely have a mooch on MPB and set up your email alerts if you want to be notified whenever bargains are afoot. They are an international company, so I've linked US, UK and Europe for your bargain hunting needs. So the Rico, 
I do see what the fuss is about. I do see how you could easily fall in love with this camera and take it around with you everywhere and rave about the image quality. I do think the photo profiles are stunning. They're maybe not as advanced as a, a Fuji camera with the recipes or real-time LUT in some Lumix cameras, but I think for simple, every day out and about photography you can get some really polished professional and beautiful photos with this little beaut of a camera price <clears throat> even my voice went when i said that the price is a little bit eye-watering but either you'll see the features of this camera and go oh my god i don't care what it costs i'm in or you'll look at it and go I might look at some alternatives. In which case, check out my channel because I review cheap, small, fun cameras and lenses all the time and you can find the right one for your needs.